Hello everybody, welcome here to Musician's Edition. This is Evan here on the piano. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about harmonic fourth and fifth intervals and how to read those on the piano and how to be able to try to read and play those quickly. So this is a follow-up to some of my recent videos on sight reading. And I did previously do melodically reading intervals and now I did harmonically reading seconds and thirds. So this is a follow-up to that where we're gonna do harmonically reading fourths and fifths. So quick review on intervals to start us off here. So um, here's an image with our intervals starting from C. So in my previous video, I did do seconds and thirds. Seconds is C to D, thirds is C to E, fourths C to F, and fifths C to G. So we're gonna talk about how to read those quickly, what to look out for, and if we can try to play those quickly, we will. So looking at the sheets, um, this is what this is going to look like for 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th if we're reading them on the sheet. So this is having F as our root note. And so for a 2nd, that's what that looks like. Really easy to identify because it puts that other note on the other side of the stem. Or if there's if it's not a quarter note and doesn't have a stem, still just kind of on the opposite side over there. So those are easy to identify. 2nd, F to G when we're playing it. For 3rd, we can see we're going to make a uh, one jump higher from F to A. We can read those easy because it's space to space, just kind of that one bump up where the notes don't overlap with each other. That is a third. And a fourth, we can see we're going one higher. We're going F to B. More commonly, if we're playing F major, we'll play F to B flat, but that's fine. Regardless, this is still a fourth, F to B. So we can see this one is a space up to a line. And so not the second, that is also space to line, but that kind of jump up above. So a space to a line uh, where the notes are not on opposite sides of the stem, that's what we're gonna call a fourth. For a fifth, we go F to C. So that's like thumb to pinky, if you have your fingers resting on a one key each, F to C. And this one we can see, this is space to space in this case, and not that jump of a third, but one jump higher to find that fifth. So one reminder on the difference between melodic and harmonic intervals, uh, for those that do need it, melodic, we're gonna be talking about one after the other. That's a melodic fifth right here, F to C. Or harmonic, we're saying playing them at the same time. So on piano, we play a lot of chords, so we play a lot of harmonic intervals. And in my last video where we did go into seconds and thirds harmonically, we did a lot where it was more than just two notes stacked on top of each other. So with chords like that, where it's just second or third gaps, we might be playing three or even four notes at a time with one hand playing those thirds um, or those seconds. In this case, because we have bigger gaps, it's less common you're gonna see more than two of these stacked on top of each other. Uh, sometimes you might see with that left hand playing a fifth and then a fourth. So like C, G, C is a way to kind of play that C chord. Um, that's the way we might see it, but unless you're playing more complex pieces like that, you're likely just gonna see just a fourth by itself, just a fifth by itself, instead of stacking those on top of each other. So let's keep looking at these fourths and fifths, make sure we can pick them out. So this is just fourths on this first one, so starting from F, that's the, the root note here, we can see we're gonna go up a fourth, that is F to B. And so looking at that gap, we can see we got two notes that get jumped over in the middle here. So that's F to B, that is a fourth, and so really, if we were playing it with our fingers like this, it'd be like that thumb to the ring finger. So that's a fourth, F to B. Then we can slide on over and play B, and the fourth above that would be E. That's the next two written on here, B and E. That's another fourth we can see. Two notes in the middle that aren't going to get played. That's that fourth. And again, on the sheet, we're seeing we went space to line, then line to space. And then we go back down to what we played, which was F and B again. That's another fourth there. And with this fifth, we're playing F to C. So that's one, two, three in the middle that aren't going to get played. For F to C, that's a fifth. And if we jump up to C and play the fifth from there, that's thumb to pinky if we have our, our fingers laying nicely, we get F to G, or sorry, C to G here. And then back down to F and C. So for these, I'm looking at fourths are always going to mix spaces and lines. That's what these even numbered intervals do, just like seconds and just like sixth will eventually. It's always a space to a line or a line to a space. That's why I can more quickly find this out um, because it's a pretty big difference from fourth to second. 
And that difference is much smaller if we're comparing fourths and fifths. So this is really a good way to pinpoint that. And for fifths, we're always going to see space to space or line to line. So in this example we were just looking at, you can see fourth is going space, line, space. However, the fifth, if we start on a space, we're always going to end on a space. Versus if instead of F and C, if it was one down and it was E and B that we started off on, we'd be seeing uh, line to line. And now we're going to practice our skills of just trying to read these quickly. So let's go ahead and put up a sheet here where they're just going to be all kind of mixed together. So some are fourths, some are fifths, and see if you can figure out which ones those are as quick as you can. So this is just reading it, but next we're going to do reading and playing it. So take a moment here, pause it on your screens, see how fast you can read this here before I give you the answers. All right, and to give it away to you, uh, I hope you're ready for it. This is our answer sheet. And so if you caught what I said before about reading those line to space or space to space, line to line, um, that's really how I'm gonna do this and how I'm gonna do it quickly is just look at, okay, am I going up from a space to a line or line to a space, always a fourth, versus the fifth, that's space to space, line to line. So you can see that first one, uh, we got F going up a fourth. That's F and B. We're mixing spaces and lines. Next one is a fifth. That is F and C. Next one is a fifth. My root note's E, so E and B. Next one is a fourth. My root note is D, so that's D to G. Next one is a fifth. My root note there is A, so A to E. Next one is a fourth. My root note there is C, so that's C to F. Next one is a fourth again. My root note is D, so that is D to G. Final one, my root note is C, playing a fifth, C to G. All right, so I hope you are getting the idea here of what to look out for for those fourths and fifths. So we're gonna go ahead and do reading and playing for this one. And in a future video, we'll do seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths all together. But in this one, let's just look at fourths and fifths, and that's it. So we're going to see them bouncing around here. So what you can practice is melodically sight reading between these root notes that we see as well, too, while we're also harmonically sight reading the, uh, the gap of the two notes we're going to be playing at the same time. So you can get practice with both of those if you are looking to do that, where you can do root note to root note. Uh, reading them across while you do the the reading them up as well too harmonically. If that sounds like a bit too much for you, then do what I kind of just demonstrated previously where you can just name that root note using whatever acronym or method you use to do that and then just name the gap for what you have to do with that second finger of yours. So we'll do one with the right hand treble clef, then we'll do one after with the left hand bass clef. This is much harder now that we are doing these fourths and fifths, so we'll take our time with it. I'll go ahead and put it on the screen here. And for me, I'll go ahead and write on um, that first root note, which is F. And then you have two ways you can do this, once again. So from F, I'm just gonna say, okay, F, that's with a fourth. I can play a fourth up from F here with my thumb and my ring finger. And then I can go to the next one and say, okay, that root note is an A. I'm gonna get my thumb to A, and that's a fifth because it's space to space. So I'm gonna play the fifth above A, which is A to E. You can do that by naming those root notes in that way. Or you can do it where I'm gonna say, okay, I need to know the first root note, that's F. Play that first gap, that's a fourth again, F and B. And then instead of naming the second root note, I just look at the gap between F and the second note. And that is me going up a third if I'm looking at F to the A, that is to the right of it. Instead of me having to name A, I just say, let's look at the gap. So my thumb's going to slide over two, to for, two for that third. Then I see I'm playing a fifth. And so I'm going to go ahead and play that. I'm not really naming notes. I'm just paying attention to gaps. And so again, for this next one, I can see from A down to the next root note, I'm going down a third. And I'm playing a fifth again. So just slide that hand over. And for this next one, this is the last one I'll kind of do and show you. You can see root notes sliding down a third again, playing a fourth. There it is. And then that's what I can do. Um, and it kind of depends on what you prefer here, what you think is going to be easier for you, naming root notes or just doing everything by those gaps. So go ahead and take a look at this treble clef example. 
see what you can do by yourself and how quickly you can play this. All right, and for those ready to continue, we will go ahead and put up the answers for this one, which is showing those gaps. And I'll go ahead and play out this whole thing as well, too. So our first one, we had F and B. I knew that one already. And then I can see that F was sliding up a third, going up to A, playing that with a fifth because it's space to space. And then I can see my root note sliding down a third to F, playing F and C because it's a fifth, space to space. Root note sliding down a third again, that's to D, playing a fourth. Let's play that fourth with the thumb and the ring finger. And next one, sliding up a bigger gap here, sliding up a fourth from D for this next root note, which is G, the note we were just playing. G playing line to line, that is a fifth. Thumb to pinky, that is D, or sorry, that is G to D. Next one, root note slides up a second while the higher note stays in the same spot. So that's easy. A to D. And the next one, root note goes down a second while I play a fourth, G to C. Next one, I got root note sliding down a fifth. That's from G to C, playing a fifth. That is C and G. So that is how I'm kind of approaching reading this. Um, for you guys, obviously take however many practice sheets you can get your hands on that will kind of demonstrate this. Or as you're reading songs, you'll get practice playing this if they do have these kinds of gaps in them as well. You can always write out your own kind of practice sheets, um, working on whatever you need to work on, whether it's on a computer or just getting a, a sheet book and writing them down in there as well too. Or I'm sure there's plenty online if you can just search out sight read harmonic fourths and fifths out there as well too. This is something that just takes a lot of practice to get down and to, be, and to do quickly. So we're gonna finish this off with the left hand, bass clef. So, you have your option of the same two methods once again. Obviously, we're just playing the, the, the same idea just with the left hand. So let's go ahead and put that sheet up there. So I'll go ahead and write out the first root note, which is C. Not middle C, but the C right below middle C. So here's my middle C. Here's the C I'm going to play. But I have my pinky ready on there because I know I'm going to need either my uh, index or my thumb for this one. So pinky to index is going to be that fourth. Pinky to thumb is going to be that fifth when I need to play it. All right, and so you know our method for how to do this, so go ahead and take a look at this and give it your best shot. Go ahead and pause it right here for those who wanna practice this one, then I'll go over the uh, how to do this one after. <clears throat> All right, and let's go ahead and put it up there. So let's see what those intervals were, and hopefully you're able to name them and play them. So C, starting off with that space to space, I know that's a fifth, that's gonna be uh, pinky to thumb, that's a C to G. I can look at my next one, see root notes just going up a second while the G stays the same, there we go. That's a fourth, D to G. I can see my root note slides down a third, so pinky's gonna go to B while it plays a fifth. That's B to F. And then I can see F stays the same while one finger sliding up. I got a fourth right there, C to F. Next one, my root note sliding up a third, going up to E, playing that as a fifth because it's space to space. All right, I can see both going up one here, a fifth playing line to line. I can see root notes sliding down a third to D while it plays a fourth. There we go, D to G. And I can see this last one, root note sliding down a third again, back down to B, playing a fifth. That's B to F. That is gonna finish it off for our reading and playing. We'll definitely go ahead and do future videos covering more of these exercises, covering songs that are used these co week, so we can really practice these skills on top of mixing seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths before we go ahead and take a look at anything higher than that. These are our most common gaps that we're gonna see, especially with what one hand's gonna be playing at the same time harmonically. So these are the ones we're gonna focus on for quite a bit here. Um, these are especially gonna be prevalent with those left hand kind of chords you might be playing. So I hope you found this video useful in identifying those fourths and those fifths, starting to be able to read and play those together. Stay tuned for future videos where we'll cover this and more here on Musician's Edition. Have fun playing. We'll see you next time.